All right. Welcome everyone to The Juice. Today we are headed to Chile to meet a world famous winemaker and he's right in the vineyard, Aurelio Montes Jr. Welcome to our show today, Aurelio. It's so exciting to have you. Oh, well, hello Angela and hello everyone. I'm very happy to be here today in this beautiful day. A little bit cloudy, but here in a beautiful and, and warm day in, in Chile. So, so happy to talk about our wines. Amazing. What grapes are you looking over today? Well, here I'm located in a coastal area. So here I'm, I'm checking some Pinot, some Sauvignon Blanc and Chardonnay. So it's a cold climate day. Even it's, uh, <laughs> it's, it's not as warm in Santiago, it's you know, in, in the central area. Today it's really warm, but here it's refreshing with all this wind coming from the coast. So it's a... Well, so I was going to say, that's why we're hearing the wind. You're, it's all that amazing, like, air is coming in off the, off the ocean, and you're just, they, I mean, it's perfect for the grapes, isn't it? Exactly. This, this, behind me, only a few miles from here, we have the Ocean Pacific that, uh, for people that doesn't know us, uh, here in Chile, our ocean is really cold. The climate inside but our ocean, it's freezing. So when you get closer to the ocean, uh, you get all this cold breeze coming into you. So, so for the vines are beautiful. Cold climate vines like Pinot Noir, Sauvignon Blanc and Chardonnay. So, so this is a perfect spot for, to grow vines. Yes, it's sort of long and skinny, but it's so diverse, this wonderful region of Chile. I feel like there's so many people maybe that haven't really discovered it yet. And for, for Montes, I mean, the wines from, from your winery are iconic from, from the region. You've helped establish Chile, I think, as a world-class wine-growing region. Yeah, exactly. As, as you just said, uh, Chile is, a, is if, if someone asked me, Aurelio, give me one word uh, to, that represents what is Chile, I will, I will say diversity. Uh, Chile, it's a, it's a very narrow country, a long, so we have from the driest desert of the world up to the Patagonian glaciers where you can get almost everything in between except uh, we don't have any rainforest like Amazonas uh, but we have a lot of uh, green forest in the south and very desert big desert in the north so so in between we have so many different types of climates and then uh, if you get closer to the ocean or, or if you get closer to the and these mountains, uh, the terroir changed completely. So the style of the wine that you want to produce, uh, it's, it's, it depends exactly where you are planted. So that's, that's why in Chile, being so small country, we have so many type of wines and so diverse. That makes a fun country to, to produce wine. It sounds like an exciting wine region. I mean, how long have you been making wine in Chile for? Well, I born, I born in a in a winery. I born in a wine <laughs> yeah. wine family, so so I have been involved for all my life with wine. But as a as an official winemaker, I I have been I have been a winemaker for twenty years. I graduated in the year two thousand uh, on nineteen ninety nine, and for twenty years I have been traveling, working in Australia, California, uh, France, uh, and of course Argentina and Chile. So I have been in quite different places, living in some of them, and another other ones I have been there only for the harvest. So with a lot of experience outside. <laughs> I mean that's wonderful because you bring all that expertise into your family, your family's winery, and um, I hear that Chile is just because of the the climate, it's very sustainable by nature too, which makes it such a a great place to to make wine as well. Yeah, exactly. One of the biggest advantages of why we say that Chile is a paradise for the making is because the wind is making quite a lot of noise. Yeah, it's <laughs> and, very windy. Uh, it's, uh, uh, it's because we're isolated. We say that Chile is a geographical, uh, geographical island where we are protected by the ocean, by the Andes Mountains, a huge range of mountains, and then the desert and the Patagonian glaciers. So at the end, in between, we are free of phylloxera, 
uh, downy mildew, and many other things that, that the world has big problems. Here in Chile, we're free of them. So in Chile, uh, with a very small effort, you can be sustainable. So, so that's why for many years, uh, for the last, I would say, 10 years, Chile has been moving inside or toward uh, this sustainable program. And, and we have been leading this, this program uh, through Wines of Chile that is pushing the industry to, to be every year more and more sustainable because we have all the conditions. And that, that's, that's it's, it's a really big gift that we have mm. here. Wow, so I know behind you, you have some different some different grapes, but we have two wines we're going to taste here that uh, that are available to Canadians and uh, coming out in Ontario this month, actually some very exciting. So I know we've got a cab and obviously the superstar grape of Chile, Carmen Air. Yeah. But you have obviously, like you said, diversity is you know, a key component of Chilean wine. So tell me more about the Cabernet Sauvignon that can come from, because it's almost cool climate Cabernet that comes from Chile. Yeah, it, 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 if you look Chile, uh, more than around 60% of what we produce in Chile is Cabernet Sauvignon. So Cabernet Sauvignon, it is our big king uh, of, of the grapes. Um, and, uh, and, 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 and to be honest with you, we, we know quite well Cabernet Sauvignon. Uh, if, 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 if I tell you about us, um, with my father, we start in a, in a huge program of uh, research, investigation about trying to find the best spots in Chile to produce Cabernet Sauvignon. So my father has been a winemaker for 50 years, so plus me 50 years. So we have a lot, a lot of experience together and, and trying different corners of Chile. So many years ago, my father found a place called Apalta, that is located far away from here. It's in the south. In here, we are in the north of Chile, in the south, uh, where we we, we have a, a, a palta or Chavo Valley. And in front of Chavo Valley, we have this Apalta Valley, where we have uh, amazing conditions for uh, Cabernet Sauvignon, and uh, the climate, of course, warmer than here, than where we stay. So, so if you make me if you make me compare Apalta with other places of the world, I would say it's quite similar to Napa in terms of climate, in terms of rains, in terms of geography. So it's very similar to Napa and um, being so different in the style of the wines, but, uh, but, 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 but the geography is quite similar. So, so in, the, in that place, we found out that it was an amazing place to, to produce Cabernet Sauvignon that together with this influence of the ocean, makes a ripe Cabernet Sauvignon, but at the same time with a lot of spiciness, so fresh Cabernet Sauvignon, so very fun, a lot of fun mm -hmm. in, the, in the wine that you're gonna drink. And I think the, the one thing that you're talking about is this, you know, this structure and freshness in the wine makes it great to eat now, uh, great to drink now, but then also like a fabulous wine to put in your cellar without having to spend a lot of money to cellar, you know, to fill up your cellar. Your wine cellar. Exactly. You know, that's one of the targets that we have every year as a winemaker. When I decide to make my blends and to make my wines, I uh, what I, what I want to produce it's a wine that represents our high quality of Chile, but at the same time, a wine that you can enjoy whatever you want. Uh, you don't need to wait 10 years to, to, to drink or to open the bottle of wine that you're going to drink from Montes. So all my technical efforts in terms of viticulture, in terms of winemaking, it's focused on, uh, on producing wine with a, with a lot of softness, uh, elegance, uh, and at the same time with a huge aging potential. Mm. The combination is quite complicated uh, because normally uh, as as Drinkable. Let's let's let, let's explain in an easy way. As a, a, a drinkable, the wines are at the beginning. They are gonna have a bigger aging potential. So it's hard to, to and it's a lot of work to produce a wine that you can drink it today and you're gonna enjoy the wine today, very fresh, elegant, with a lot of power, and then being able to age for a 20 years, no problem. So so it's it's a combination that uh, needs a lot of work. 
But that's yes. why we really focus on that line. It's a, it takes a talented winemaker to make a wine that's going to taste good now and also going to taste good later, right? It takes exactly. and 20 years of experience and then with your father's 50, I mean, you're probably the most experienced wine, wine, wine making family in Chile. <laughs> yeah, and that's true, huh? I mean, that's true. <laughs> yeah. it's, it's, the only, it's the only winery with two generations as, as a winemaker and, and, and owner of a winery. So, so we... We, we love what we do. It's, it's a lifestyle. It's, a, you know, of course, everything's around the wine. Mm -hmm. So, so we, we love to talk about wine. We love, we, we love to drink wine, of course. And, <laughs> yeah. and all together, you know, we, we make, you know, these beautiful wines. Well, and your winery is so beautiful. The design of it's built in feng shui and the Gregorian chant music that happens in the in the oak in the oak barrel room, and you know the restaurant you have. It is a lifestyle. You've designed the entire property to be sort of you know it, they embody your philosophy as winemakers and as a winemaking family. It's so amazing. Yeah, you know it's a that's a really good point because um, winemaking. It's, it's not only a wine process, it's much more. Why, why wine is so romantic? Why people will really full of wine? Because at the end, you have a beautiful story behind, behind every, every bottle that you drink. And, and we feel like, of course, many other wineries, we feel special, we feel unique. And, uh, and we want to give to everyone that wants to visit, visit us, we want to give them the best experience they, they can get you know, from the winery, from us. So, uh, for, from my point of view, you know, uh, you need to, uh, at, at least at the winery, you need to express your philosophy to everyone that visit the winery through, you know, this tour. So, mm -hmm. the only way that we found to, to show people how we work, how we respect the environment, how we respect the community, uh, you know, the, the, our people uh, and everyone, it's visiting the winery. You visit the winery and you understand why you're using Feng Shui philosophy at the winery. It sounds crazy, but it's not crazy. It's because <laughs> you make a better place to work. You make mm -hmm. a, a more equilibrium place. And we have a big philosophy. Our wines are, are made by people. Of course, we are the leaders, but we have a huge team of people that help us. So, if we have happy people working with us, we're gonna have happy wines. So, happy people, <laughs> happy wines, that's our philosophy, and that's the way we work everywhere, at the vineyard, at the winery, even our export people that, that sells, sells the wine. Uh, everyone has the same philosophy too. We're a team, we're a family, where we enjoy what we do. It's all about energy, you're right. And I mean, wine is so much more than, you know, it is so much, it's a time capsule and it's liquid and it's liquid art and it's art you consume, but there's so much that happens on a macro level and a micro level to get this deliciousness um, into, into our bodies, yeah. you know? Yeah, exactly, exactly. So, so but at the end, it's, it's important for everyone to understand that uh, the wine process is, it's, it's so important. Uh, let's, let, let, let's explain in a different way. There's a lot of people that talk about terroir. Terroir, the meaning, the meaning of terroir is the combination of soil and climate. But there's another another uh, concept that exists that we added to this is people. Yeah. So we make the wine, we put you know the different wines. So at the end, you know it's if again if everything is equilibrated, everything is it is, it is in a good balance. You're gonna reflect that inside of the bottle, and you definitely you're gonna enjoy because the wine is gonna be in a good balance. So I have a decanter here. Do you think we should decant one of these wines? Um, I have, I, I only have one decanter at the moment that's ready to go. Which one do you think I should decant? Yeah, definitely the Purple Angel, okay. I think the Alpha Cab. Uh, I always. Well, I, I decanted here in my glasses. <laughs> I put <laughs> in the wine and I opened the bottle like 40 minutes oh, nice. ago. So I have my wine here. But uh, you can decant 
Uh, you have to take the purple angel. It's a it's, it's, it's an obvious recommendation because that's a wine. That's a big wine that you need to make them breathe. Alpha Cabernet Sauvignon, of course, if you have the opportunity to decant the wine, it's always going to be better. But if you can decant, you you can put it in the glass and then put some air, you know, move in the glass. And with that, it's going to be good enough. I've got some nice big glasses here. So yeah, I have these, uh, these, Riedel, these Riedel ones are called angel, wi angel wing glasses. And they're built with a little okay. indent in it. So I figured the purple angel has to go into the angel wings glasses. <laughs> here, I don't know if you can see it, but let me see. there's an angel here in my glass. Oh, that's so nice. It's etched into the glass. So we have our angel protecting us. Yes, of course. There's an angel, I think a statue in the winery, isn't there? Yeah, exactly. Yes. Mm -hmm. I, 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 the funny story about the angel, that one, of, one of the partners of my father, the, the, the guy that brought the angel concept to the, to the winery, uh, he used to collect different types of angels. And one day he bought this huge angel and he, he didn't know where to put it. So he put it inside of the barrel room uh, because we had space there I mean, when we started. And so this angel had been with us since the beginning and taking care of our premium wines. Aww. So it's, uh, it looks over everything. Yeah. So Sometimes. The, 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 the funny story about the angels is that this the, the partner of my father, this guy, uh, he used to carry always small angels in his pocket because he always said, I had a huge guard angel that protect me. And, and he had three, three big car accidents. One of them, he flew, he flew into a river and he survived without any scratches, without any problem. So he said, you know, from now on, these angels that are protecting me, I'm gonna take them into the winery. So that's why we change all our labels to angels because they, they are our guards that protect us. That's so that's so beautiful. I mean, what a what a gorgeous story. Yeah. That's really lovely. I mean, wine is so heavenly. It makes sense that it would be, you know, the angels would be flying around because sometimes it's very hard to make wine. I mean, obviously it is very hard to make wine always, but you know, it's uh, you need sort of a bit of a, a bit of a heavenly guide to get through life and to, to, to grow wine. <laughs> yeah, exactly. So Cabernet Sauvignon, tell me about the uh, tell us about the Montez Alpha, and this is a 2018. So I'll just exactly. put it up here so everybody can see a little bit better, because this is available across Canada, I believe. Yeah, exactly. This is uh, the new release, and uh, this wine. Uh, it's, it is by far our most important wine for Montes. Uh, I'm going to explain you why. Because when we started in the year 1987 with my father, he, he decided to change the view of the wine industry. At that time, in the beginning, uh, in the middle of the 80s, the, the wine in the industry was completely focused on volume. Mm. Volume, entry-level wines, uh, good value wines. And my father realized, after many years being a winemaker, realized that the quality there was so good that we could compete with anyone. So he decided to really start with something new. And they, they, they with, 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 there were four partners. They decided to start with Montes with a new concept of Chile, with quality, focus on 100% on quality wines. And this was the first wine that we produced in 1987. And, uh, and this wine has been the, the ambassador of Chilean wines everywhere in the world. We're a medium, small winery in Chile, but we sell wine in more than 100 wines, 100 countries in the world. So and wherever you go, in, every, in most of the, of the countries of the world, you're going to find Montes Alfa Cabernet Sauvignon. Uh, we sell a little bit to each country, but it's important for us to have this wine to be the ambassador of Chile when you talk about quality. So, so it, it is an important wine for us, yes. 
uh, because it was the first. That why, that's why we call Alpha, because it was the first of, of our premium wine. It was the first premium wine from Chile. Uh, so it was the first one to be, to be brave, to show the world the quality that we had in Chile. So it has a lot of meanings. And that's why it's so important. Wow. Well, and uh, the price tag is, I think this wine is under under $20 too, yeah. where, where we are. And so, I mean, you can't, the, the quality of what you're, you're producing is so over delivering for the price, which is what great, I mean, great wine is, that's really, a lot of people buy because of the label or because they like angels, but they'll repeat buy and they'll fall in love with a country or a wine because the wine is, is amazing, right? Yeah, it is. It, it, it is. People really, I think people really understand what we want to do uh, as winemakers and, uh, and uh, one of the things that, uh, or one of the, our most important philosophy that we have at the winery, it's uh, that quality is important, but, consist but consistency, it's even more important. Because at the end of the day, uh, I, you can't have one year a beautiful wine, and next year a horrible wine, and next year a good wine. It's confusing. So at the end of the day, we worked so tough to produce consistent wine in a very high level of quality. So I make, I, I try to make sure that every time that you're going to open a bottle of Montes wines, the wines are going to be as good as last time. Do you have complicated vintages that make uh, each year a bit more challenging? Or definitely you know, yes. Yes. Definitely yes. Yeah, we have good years, bad years, horrible years, amazing years. But but how we manage that? Is that, for example, for the icon wines, if the year wasn't that good, we don't produce. We produce zero. If and in, in, in the situation of the Montes Alpha, uh, we decrease the volume. We, we only choose the blocks that we get the, 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 the level of quality that we need. If, the, if, if, for example, one block every year is amazing, but that year was, wasn't that good, we don't get any praise from the year or any juice from so, so at the end, we control the quality with volume. Good years, we can produce a little bit more. Bad years, we produce really small amounts to be sure that this small amount is going to be very good. Mm -hmm. so, so at the end, is we try to manage, you know, the volume to, to avoid. And what does, um, I'm going to ask you about 2020, because I'd love to know about this vintage, what's, what God and the divine has given you for this vintage, but how was 2018 for, for your vintage for Montes Alpha? Uh, 2018 for Chile was one of, one of the best years that we had in the last 20 years. Uh, wow. It was an amazing year. Uh, why was it so good? Because we have a very nice winter and then a beautiful spring and then uh, uh, our summer wasn't that warm was was uh, quite nice uh, so so the, 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 the vines arrived quite well uh, at, the, at the end of the summer the temperatures went quite high uh, so so the the, the beginning the beginning season or, or the, when we harvest was a little bit earlier than a normal mm. year, but the quality was outstanding, outstanding. Wow. So, so 2020 is going to be a great year, not as good as 2018. 18 <laughs> for me, it's you know it's a rock star, but but wow. still that was a good year. So Montez Alpha, the rock star vintage we have right now, the 2018. Yeah, exactly. This dark. This dark chocolate and spice, it's uh it's a very like, oh man, it's a it's a very happy wine. It's like as soon as I smelt it, you were talking about you know wines being happy, but it like all those smells and aromas just lifted my my whole demeanor and they made me happier. That chocolate and spice. I don't want to say holiday, but it kind of has this uh this warm this warmness to the nose that I really like. Yeah, how how we work the wines there, it's our, our Cabernet Sauvignon are a little spicy, really uh, vibrant in the mouth. And I, I age this wine in French oak, a specific toast that we, 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 we produce for Montes uh, with the Coopers. So, so we age for 12, 12 months in this beautiful French oak 
that gave us all this black chocolate uh, cigar box uh, with all this uh, sweetness in the back. So really, really nice combination with that spicy vibrancy with all this complexity of the barrels that make the wine wine very tasty. Yeah, a little bit of, uh, you know, I mean, you got blackberries and, and blueberries, but you have this softness and silkiness on the palate. Yeah. It's, 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 it's so welcoming. Like it's, it's a very smooth, gentle wine, but you can tell that it's structured and has so much backbone. It's sort of a gentlemanly wine, but you know, it's, it's got this really nice suit on. It's blue suit on. It looks really, it's really nice. Yeah, you know, this, this is the type of wine I love to cook. And this is the type of wine that I, I recommend to drink it with, with meat, but cook in the oven, mm. not in the barbecue. In the barbecue, it's stronger flavors, uh, you know, with all this, all this fat coming out, all the, the, the juice of the fat coming out for, 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 for the barbecue. When you cook in the oven, the meat is much juicy, softer, really tasty. So, so this wine that is not a huge wine, it's a really nice and easy drink wine. It's, it's, it's perfect for, for any type of cook, you know, in the oven. I the love that. The elegant juiciness, the elegance of this wine really shine, shines through too. It's, um, you know, you can taste sunshine, but then you can taste, uh, you know, that diurnal shift that you get at night too, when it's really cold and the vines get time to sit. And so you're tasting like sunshine, but a nice cool elegance. There's a freshness and acidity that really helps to elongate the palate and the silky smooth taste profile that just uh, is really quite beautiful. Yeah, yeah. So the oak treatment is we have we have 100 French oak on here that that you're using yeah. um, that is you know selected hand selected by you. Sorry, did you mention how long it was in the oak barrels? I think you did, but 12 months. 12 months. But only one third of the barrels are new. Right. All the rest are used barrels because we don't want to to kill the flavors of the wine with a with a with the taste of the oak. So so the oak is like pepper. Yeah. Add a little bit, to cook, yeah. you know, it's a touch that you can make the, the, the food more tasty. The same here with the wine. The aging mm. in, in French barrels gave us all this complexity without killing the flavors and the complexity of the wine. Well, this wine is truly elegant. It's beautiful. It's delicious. It's supple. It's smooth. It's it has this elegance, this beauty to it. I mean, it's it's dynamite. So congratulations. This wine is is just beautiful. Thank you. <laughs> Cheers. So now we, um, I think for any Cabernet lover, Chile is such a, a great destination to find some wonderful wines to enjoy um, any time of the year. And I think you are correct. This wine has a, a subtlety and an elegance to it that, you know, barbecue and charcoal is not going to mesh well with it. You definitely want that to those meats to really kind of be savory together and oven roasted, you know, anything, a pork loin or a, um, a big, a big piece of beef that's been marinated and sits a long time. This is going to be a really beautiful pairing with it. Exactly. Exactly. That's, you can enjoy my so now we have the Carmenere, which I think um, everybody needs to learn to love and, and understand. I think it's probably a new grape for some people, but I know over time it's been misunderstood as a, as a different type of red grape. I think it was misunderstood as Merlot for a really long time. But Carmenere is, is a Bordeaux grape that uh, made its way over to Chile, it has its original rootstocks in Chile now thankfully and and it's sort of the superstar grape of the of chile isn't it exactly this this uh carmener as you said came came from uh, bordeaux the thing is that this carmener is one of the most difficult grapes to grow um, because you need a very long summer a very dry autumn and in bordeaux that's not the situation you're gonna find. Uh, so it's a it's 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 a grape that if you harvest uh, too early, uh, you're gonna get an undrinkable wine, too spicy, green, uh, aggressive tannins. So the only way to get an amazing Carmener is waiting, waiting as long as possible. So uh, in Chile we brought Merlot at the beginning of the of the 1800. 
and, 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 and we thought it was Merlot, we planned Merlot, and for many years we produced this strange Merlot. Everyone, all the judges in the world, they were saying, wow, it's an amazing Merlot. The Chilean Merlot, it's unique. Well, it was unique because it wasn't Merlot. So, uh, so in 1994, we found out that it was not Merlot, it was Carmenet, uh, blended with Merlot in the same vineyard. So we cleaned the vineyards and we planted pure Merlot and pure Carmenet. And we, we didn't know what to do, how you manage, how you produce, how, you, how long you have to wait. So that's the reason why it took us almost 10 years to release our first Carmenet out from Montes because it took us almost 10 years to research, to learn, to understand how Carmenet works. And, and now we feel so confident with, uh, with the way how we can uh, work with Carmenet. And, uh, and Purple Angel has been a quite successful wine. And the reason why, from my point of view, is because it's a wine that has everything, it has spiciness, but in a correct amount. It's not green, it's not too power, it's spicy, nice, beautiful equilibrium in the nose. And then in the mouth, it's a so silky wine that you put in the mouth and it's like a explosion of silkiness in, in, in your mouth, making the wine so, so easy to drink. Uh, but because you have to wait so long to, har to harvest the grapes, that we decided to add 8% of Petit Verdot. Why? Because when you wait so long, you lose the tannins, you lose the acidity of the wine. So the wine is soft, but it's short. So adding 8% of this rugby player, this big, big wine of Petit Verdot, it's a, you, what you do, you change the finish of the wine. So that's why Purple Angel being almost 100% Carmenet, it's, uh, sorry, the wind, the wind is bothering me. It's almost throwing away my sunglasses. Uh, so uh, you add 8% of this Petit Verdot with a full acidity, acidity wine with huge tannins, we call the rugby player, that lift the back of the wine, making the wine soft, but long, that lasts in your mouth, so, so you can really enjoy you know, the real, the, the full flavor of the wine. That nose is so, per it's filled with perfume and dried violets and what an incredible nose. It's very aromatic. It's aromatic, it's spicy, mm -hmm. blackberries, blueberries. And then look in the mouth, how, how it moves in the mouth. It's a wine that really, here we're going to a different type of food. Yum. Uh, this Carmenet for me, it's a perfect combination with, for example, Thai food, with Thailand mm. food. A perfect, perfect food for lamb. Uh, if you want to do it in the barbecue, perfect. Mm. Lamb in barbecue with purple mm. angel. Mm. Here you have the spiciness. Here you have the power. Here you have the, 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 the this, this taste that helps to drink, uh, mm. to, to eat the, the, the meat. It's like a spicy Korean beef would be a really interesting pairing with this because yeah. those, those spices together would be so so beautiful, right? Exactly. It's, it's also exactly. really, I feel like it has some like personality. Like there's there's a, there's sort of a, a fruity personality to it. I, I, you taste it and you're like, oh, this wine has personality. Like it is a, it is a fun wine as much as it is a serious wine. I mean, it tastes delicious, but it has like so many different angles to the profile. Exactly what as you said, it's it's a wine that has so many layers, yeah. and, and, and 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 the wine, it's a very versatile wine. Mm -hmm. In general, it's a wine that that match, you know, so well with food, with uh, spice in it, with not that spicy at the same time also, but mm -hmm. but it's a wine that all these different layers of flavors and and complexity in the mouth. It's a wine that that even even you can drink one glass without without food, no problem. It's so yeah. tasty, so oh. drinkable, and soft that makes the wine so, so nice. And so tell me your winemaking secret on this wine. 
Yeah, it's there's many <laughs> if things. you can. There's yeah, many. there's many things, there's, right? <laughs> first of all, I'm gonna put the glass here because of the wind. Uh, first of all, we play with two different vineyards. One that is in Apalta that I call Apalta like a racing horse. Beautiful, elegant, a little bit weak. So that Carmener gives me gives me all the elegance, that part of the blend. The other Carmener that I use is from Marchiwi. Marchiwi is another vineyard closer to the ocean, not as close as here, but closer to the ocean. And it's it's it's, it's a little more spicy and more vibrant. You can get more electricity in the wine. So it's a wine that is it's beautiful to blend it both together. So you get the complexity. Uh, the, the elegance plus the vibrancy. All together, you, 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 you build the purple plus the yeah. petit verdot that I just told you. And and uh, and then in the winemaking, sorry, before that, we wait till very late to harvest it, to harvest this wine. That's why we call purple angel because when you harvest Carmener, there's no least hunting. We're just in the end of the autumn, very close to winter. And if you look at the vineyard, the vineyard looks purple with all the cluster hanging from the vines. So it's so beautiful. And and then at the winery, we we fermented in a normal, normal way. And and the only the only difference that we use is that here we give to the wine a lot of air. It's really important for Carmener to, to receive ah. air, oxygen. To, yes, to make the right. wine more, you know, more, uh, with, with more expression. If yes. not, the wine stay close and sometimes a little boring. That helps with aromatics and, and winemaking. Exactly. Right. Mm -hmm. Exactly. Which is exactly what you want. This wine is super aromatic, so you want it. You want to bring that forward to it. Yeah, I want to open the bottle. I want to. I, I need to <laughs> receive all this amount of flavors, you know, and intensity of the of the wine coming out of the bottle so that's why that's why i always also recommend to decan the wine because you're going to get even much more complexity uh intensity in the wine so i love the the angle that you said where you you know you go to harvest and there's all these purple grapes hanging off the vines with no leaves and it it, it literally like looks like probably angels hanging from vines like yeah all exactly in this be beautiful formation all the angels yeah. <laughs> you're just hanging in front of you. yeah Exactly. I mean, this is this is a really wonderful, this is a really beautiful wine, and I feel like I love your food pairings, like a barbecued lamb, lamb rack of lamb, or um, you know, Korean Korean ribs, as I was saying. So there's some wonderful ways to spice up this pairing with, I think, um, different types of food because yeah. that's exciting too for red wine. It's not just you know, I think we're still telling people it's still not red wine and, and red meat. There's so many different ways to to add in red wine oh, into man. some of international meals. Yeah, exactly. Exactly, and, and I probably spent at least not this year. But a normal year, I spent three months traveling around the world to understand what people are, are drinking, what people are eating, what type of different types is coming now. So for me, it's really important to open my mind when I make my plans to understand what people is eating and drinking in the world. So, so I, I take the best of my terroir to make these beautiful wines. Yes, and I think you're absolutely right. When we talk about terroir, we can never forget the people that add to the terroir. It's not just, you know, the land, the sky, the wind, and the, and the water. It's the people that add in, into that terroir and your experience. You must be missing traveling this year, I feel like, yeah, a little yeah. bit, have you? Definitely, yes. yes. <laughs> especially, especially for holidays. <laughs> yeah, I know, right? But, uh, we're up. Not anymore. Uh, it's quite sad, but well. We can't well, this, no. I know it's been one of those years we just uh, you know we, I think everybody's drinking more wine which is really great yeah. I feel like people are you know learning to be at home more and cooking more and so taking different wines and learning how to explore in the kitchen and with great glassware or decanting is you know I think the above table investment that people are doing to their homes is uh, is pretty exciting because now they're learning things on their own. They're almost, almost becoming their own at home sommeliers or at home chefs. You know. Yeah, yeah. We all of us we feel more more a, a better cooker uh, chef, yeah. better chef than than, than before. Yeah. <laughs> we have been cooking so much that uh, yeah. you know we feel better chef. 
Well, thank you so much. I know, thank you for tasting Purple Angel with us. I know this is a special, this, this, there's not very much of this uh, release. This is a small little, no. little production, isn't it? It's a very small production every year. It's uh, depending on the year, but could be really, really small. You know, very good years. We can grow a little bit more, but uh, the same vineyard, the same blocks. So like, like good things, comes in small pockets so <laughs> so <laughs> so pick some up while you can because it's not released every year and it's in very very exactly. small allotments when we get it here so uh, a wonderful gift this season a wonderful collection item for you and a wonderful like saturday night date dinner to uh, a wine to have a wine adventure with you can go to chile without having to go to chile so yeah exactly <laughs> exactly it's a Thank good you way so to, much. Taste, to taste chile <laughs> yes a good way to taste the best of chile i love that yeah yeah. Aurelio, it's been such a pleasure. Thank you for tasting your Montez Alpha with us and our Purple Angel. So exciting. And for sharing your vineyard view. I feel like we all wish yeah. we could be, be there with you right now. And uh, I look forward to, to seeing you again soon, hopefully in Canada and Toronto. If not, maybe I'll come to Chile. <laughs> Definitely, yes. We will be waiting for you here. <laughs> Amazing. Cheers, my friend. Cheers. Thank you.